Okay, here's the headstock. We're gonna try to boil this thing out. I've got um, baling wire on there so I can lift it out of the tank. And I've already done a preliminary cleaning with just some oven cleaner, um, just a quickie, just to get all the big chunks and whatnot off of it. Um, but the goal now is to, is to do a complete cleaning and hopefully strip all the paint in one operation here. Okay, I'll show you the sound for a second. Okay, here's my redneck engineered um, parts cleaning hot tank. <laughs> so I got a, um, it's actually a 30 gallon barrel cut in half and I've just got water in it right now. See I've got some strips of um, angle iron in the bottom to hold the parts up off the bottom. Got an old camp stove just using the back burner only right now. And unfortunately I thought I had, and I, I think I have somewhere, the adapter where you can hook up a five gallon propane bottle to the stove. But I'm gonna try the small tank just to get started here. All right, so just got plain water in there. I need to add a little more. And then uh, I'm gonna add some soap to it and get her boiling and we'll drop the parts in. Okay, back with you. Okay, everything's in. I got about four scoops of laundry detergent to 20 gallons of water and about a pint of purple power. I would have put more purple power in, but that's all I got right now. <laughs> so I've got bailing wire and tag lines and everything so we can uh, pull the parts up, check progress and be able to remove them. There's the cone pulley. I don't think that's rust. I think that's just... All right, I'm going to keep a close eye on that one. So, anyways, we're cooking. Keep you guys up to date here. I think I might grab the big torch and see if I can get up the boiling a little quicker. Alright, so we're still cooking. The... Uh, the Coleman stove is a little wimpy, but it's keeping it just under boiling. It's trying to boil. I've had to um, heat it up with the big torch to get it up to temperature, but it seems to be holding. I'm on my third tank. Yeah, so definitely want to have the adapter, hook up a five gallon tank, and maybe a little more powerful Coleman stove. Or better burner but, uh, so far so good I've had to put some metal and some transite board <laughs> around the bottom here to try to keep the heat in so we'll let her go until we run out of propane and then uh, pull them out and see how they look
2017. Finally got the headstock back together. Um, sorry I didn't get more photos or videos. It just time is uh, <laughs> not being friendly to me right now. Uh, I was hoping to be farther along, but uh, work has been really busy and uh, just needed to get some progress done on this thing. So anyways, out here with uh, <laughs> Sullivan the shop dog. Hey buddy, you ready to supervise? Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so anyways, it's supposed to be 100 degrees today or about 37 degrees C for you metric guys. But anyways, here's the headstock back together. I use the uh, Super Lube um, in instead of oil. Uh, everything's running nice and free. There's our, I got it in, uh, I got the pin pulled right now so we can put her in back gear here. There we go. And everything's turning nice. Um, went ahead and um, pre-shimmed. I was able to, the original shims look like they're going to be perfect, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to check it again. But uh, just uh, checking it on the bench for bearing clearance. It looks like it's right at 1,000th, which is great. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll check it again once, uh, once it's all together. So. I, I changed the spindle, so I, I picked up a different spindle off eBay, better than my, my original. So, I'm happy with that, it looks really good. Um, anyway, this was quite a project, just getting this together. So, I spent some time this morning just cleaning the bench off, it was a mess. And I've got uh, a few parts here ready to go. Uh, what do we got here? We've got um, threading dial. <laughs> so this is another one that I haven't started on yet. Uh, it's going to take a pretty good cleanup, but anyways, here's the threading dial. Kind of saving that for toward the end. And I've been working on the bed here. Uh, this is uh, this is not the original bed for the machine. Uh, this is uh, one I found uh, locally. It's a little newer than mine. I think this is about a 1963, roughly, or no, no, I think it was a 50, late 50s, like a 57 or so. And I was. I took a lot of careful measurements to make sure that the mounting holes are the same the, uh, on both ends, dimensions are the same. Uh, one thing that's, that is different is the, um, the headstock uh, bolt holes here. I believe that this, the newer ones use the clamp. A, um, that clamped onto the dovetails or you know, on the ways. So I'm gonna, I don't have those components, so I'm gonna have to go with uh, studs. I gotta make a stud for the back here. The through bolt will work on this front one because I can access the back. <laughs> the, there's just no room to, um, to get a bolt in of the proper length in this back one here, so I'll have to make a stud. Okay. The, uh, the gear rack is in good shape. I do need to, on the back here, I, I do need to lay out and drill two holes for the um, taper attachment um, stop, stop block. Uh, as far as this bed goes, it's got wear. Um, it's much better than uh, my original bed but it's still got a fair amount of wear, but I'm just gonna live with it. 
So then over here, that's all we do. <laughs> so here's the rest of the project. Pay no attention to any laundry in the background, but you know, here's the original, original bed. Um, the, um, the, the mounting holes for the um, the coupling for the lead screw drive uh, are different between the two, so I'm going to have to um, come up with a solution there. Uh, one hole I can re-drill, but there's a slight difference in the um, in these bosses. The dimensions are a little different, so I'll either have to use a spacer um, to get those to line up. Um, not a big deal. Um, I do want to keep this uh, war production board uh, emblem, so I'll have to I'll have to re-drill for those rivets. And here's all the other components down here still need to be cleaned up. The uh, underdrive mechanism, original motor, 1943 motor runs great I, I wanted to keep it but I think I'm gonna go ahead and I got a I got a two horse three phase motor I think I'm gonna put that on there so I can do the VFD drive um, I'm gonna change the bearings even though they feel fine on the underdrive but this far into it there's no sense in just leaving it the way it is yeah. so anyways uh, that's kind of where we're at uh, I've been trying to restore each component as I take them off. That way I can just store them. I'm storing them in the back <laughs> back room. And uh, when I get the, the base items done here, I can just start bolting components on. I've been thinking about this uh, chip tray. So I think what I'm going to do is, is only paint the bottom side and leave the top and the uh, interior of the tray just natural. I'll just polish it the best I can. I think with, you know, chips and tools and, you know, just everyday use that, you know, painting it, it's just not gonna hold up. Um, and I think it will look kind of cool being polished anyways, so. I may try to restore this original bed. Um, that that's a project for <laughs> for another time um, but uh, I may try to uh, either mill it grind it and then of course scrape it um, that's stuff I've never done before so it'll it'll be a, a research and uh, proceed slowly process and I got nothing to lose really this bed is so worn that um, um, you know, if I if I ruin it, uh, essentially it's already trash in the condition it's in. So, okay, and then over here, one other item is here's the uh, the saddle. So this is the this is a, a newer saddle that fits that new bed uh, rather well. And then here's my original saddle for the worn original bed. Um, so if I end up regrinding and scraping that that other bed, I'll have to turkite this one and match it. So here on the um, on the saddle, I've still got to put the oil the gets oilers in. Um, and I don't think I'm going to do anything else to it until it's back on the machine. Uh, I've got, I cleaned up both sets of um, uh, uh, retainers here. I forget what you call them, but anyways, the uh, I'm probably going to use the newer one. The original one here has this. Uh, it'll show up on camera. It's got a little kind of like a divot in the casting. Um, where the and plus this is the one that came with the with the um, 
with the new uh, new saddle. I'll probably end up using that one, but I, you know I have options there, and I cleaned up the old bolts, but I might just you know these are hidden anyways. You don't see them unless you crawl under the machine. I'll probably just you know put the new bolts in rather than try to clean those other ones up. So, anyways, that's where we're at. So I'm gonna get a little bit of work done. Heading over to Dad's house tonight for Father's Day. I'm gonna do a little barbecue over there. Um, and uh, I don't know how far I'll get, but uh, there's some of the junk on the bench here. All right, guys. Well, happy Father's Day, everybody. And uh, catch you on the next one.